Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the GitLab flow, which is the primary branching strategy that is recommended by GitLab if you or your organization is using GitLab as your source code management system. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to perform the GitLab flow in GitLab. Uh, I will do that in future videos. This video is going to focus on the concept of the GitLab flow, and we will visually see how the GitLab flow works before actually performing the GitLab flow in a future video. Having said that, there are a couple of prerequisites that I would expect you to have coming into this video. The first is just a basic understanding of Git and how Git works. Um, you should also be familiar with uh, source code management systems like GitHub or Garrett or Bitbucket. Uh, and then you should also be familiar with the concept of a branching strategy. And I think it would help a lot if you're familiar, if you're already familiar with uh, one or two other branching strategies like the Git flow or the GitHub flow, uh, because you'll be able to use those as a reference when watching this video. So now that we have those prerequisites out of the way, let's get started. So here is a graphical representation of the GitLab flow. And there's actually two versions of the GitLab flow. Uh, the one that we're looking at here uses long-lived environment branches. From the very first commit of the Git repository, you would branch off into these long-lived environment branches, and each environment branch represents an environment in which your uh, code base or your software is deployed. So in this workflow, the main branch uh, isn't the stable branch. It doesn't contain uh, production code. Instead, you have uh, a branch called production, which represents the production environment in which your code is deployed. So in this case, the main branch can be considered a staging or pre-production branch, or you can have a dedicated branch for the staging or pre-production environments, like what's shown in this graphic. So what are the steps that we need to take to complete this workflow? Well, the first step that we need to take is branch off of the main branch into a feature branch. So we do use feature branching in this workflow. And uh, similar to other workflows, we branch off of the main branch. And we work on our feature on the main branch. And when we feel like our feature is uh, ready to be reviewed and uh, undergo automated testing, uh, what we would do then is push our changes up to uh, GitLab and open a merge request. And remember, a merge request, similar to a pull request in uh, GitHub, it's basically proposing that your changes uh, that you were wor working on on your feature branch be merged into uh, a target branch. In this case, uh, we're going to merge the feature branch into the main branch. So once you've opened up a merge request, uh, that should trigger automated testing either inside of GitLab or through an external tool like Jenkins. And once automated uh, testing has passed for the changes on your feature branch, we then merge that merge request into the main branch. So we're promoting our changes from the feature branch into the main branch. After the feature branch gets merged into the main branch, uh, our work is still not complete. What should happen after merging our changes into the main branch is additional testing. So what I want you to notice is the uh, y-axis on the left-hand side. I've written scope of testing, and at the bottom of the y-axis, I've written narrow, and at the top of the y-axis, I've written broad. And what I mean by this is at the bottom of the y-axis, we have a narrow scope of testing. So when we're um, testing our feature branch, our scope of testing is just the feature that we wrote on the feature branch. So we have um, you know, unit tests to test our feature. And then once we uh, promote our feature into the main branch, then we're going to be testing our feature um, along with other features to see how those features integrate with each other, right? And as we promote our changes into um, higher level environment branches, the scope of testing becomes more and more broad. So after the feature branch is merged into the main branch, uh, we would then open a merge request from the main branch to the staging slash pre-production branch uh, or whatever your environment uh, branch is called. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, called the staging or pre-production environment. Uh, 
you would create however many environment branches for however many environments that your code base is deployed to. So similar to the feature branch workflow, after uh, creating the merge requests between the main branch and the staging slash uh, pre-production environment branch, that should trigger automated testing. And if automated testing um, passes, then we would promote uh, the changes from the main branch into the staging slash pre-production environment. Now I'd like you to notice the merge point um, between the main branch and the staging slash pre-production branch. In the merge between the feature branch and the main branch, uh, there is a uh, git commit uh, represented there. Uh, so when we merge the feature branch and the main branch, that may or may not have caused a merge commit uh, to be created. Um, but from the main branch to the staging slash pre-production branch, that should be a fast forward merge, meaning there shouldn't have been any commits made on the staging slash pre-production environment branch um, that need to be merged uh, with the changes on the main branch. And likewise, when we merge the staging slash pre-production branch into the production branch, that would also be a fast forward merge. And after we perform that uh, merge, we would uh, create a git tag. Now, visually, this is easier to digest, but it's not a super accurate representation of what's actually happening uh, when we use a fast forward merge. Uh, so that tag that you see, uh, even though it's pointing to the production branch, it would actually be pointing to the commit that was made on the main branch. And to show you what I mean, I'd like to quickly pull up a tool uh, called Visualizing Git that is really helpful for um, graphically understanding how Git works. Okay, so this Visualizing Git tool allows us to uh, graphically view what uh, Git repositories history looks like. And uh, in this case, we have a single commit in a local Git repository. We have one branch called main. So the main branch is pointing to uh, this one commit in our repository. And we're currently checked out to the main branch. And we know that because the head pointer is pointing to the main branch. So what I'd like to do is illustrate what I was talking about with the fast forward merge. Um, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is create a couple of branches. We'll uh, create one called pre-production. And then we'll create another one uh, called production. So we have uh, three branches created and we're still checked out to uh, the main branch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna branch off the main branch into a feature branch. So I'm gonna use git checkout dash B and then feature branch. So now I'm checked out to the feature branch. What I'm going to do is make some commits on the feature branch. I'm also going to check out to the main branch and I'm gonna make a commit on the main branch so that uh, the histories diverge and when we merge the main branch with the feature branch we will have uh, a merge commit so i'm going to say git merge feature and this will merge the changes on the feature branch into the main branch so now that we've promoted our changes uh, from the feature branch into the main branch whatever environment the the main branch represents uh, we would then promote uh, after you know verifying that the the changes um, pass automated testing uh, in the environment that the main branch represents, we would then promote those changes to the pre-production environment. Uh, so uh, what I'll do here is I will check out to the pre-production uh, pre environment and I will say git merge main. And uh, what you'll notice in the left-hand uh, side, the console output in the left-hand side of the screen is that it says you have performed a fast forward merge. So a merge commit was not created. We just moved the pre-production branch tag to point to the same commit that the main branch is pointing to. Now we're gonna follow the same promotion process, but with the production environment now. So I'm going to say git checkout production and then git merge pre-production, okay? And again, it's just moving the production branch tag uh, forward performing a fast forward merge. We can go ahead and delete our feature branch. And what I'll also do is create a tag 
at this commit. So I'm going to say git tag v1.0.0. Okay, and that creates a tag pointing to uh, this merge commit. One quirk about this tool that I'd like to point out that is kind of a point of confusion is the direction of the arrows. So the um, latest commit looks like it's pointing to prior commits, and that's because it's accurately representing the underlying data structure um, of Git, which is essentially a linked list of uh, commit nodes, and each node in a linked list points to uh, its parent node. It has a, a point of reference to its parent node. So that's why the direction of the arrows is going backwards. Um, so it looks a little confusing, but um, we are moving forward in time from left to right. So the rightmost commit is the most recent commit. So now that we've seen how the fast forward merge works, uh, let's go back to the presentation. So that pretty much wraps up the environment branches version of the GitLab flow. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second version of the GitLab flow. And uh, this version of the GitLab flow uses release branches instead of environment branches. So the way that this version of the workflow uh, works is you still have the main branch and you still have feature branches that are branching off of the main branch and then being merged back into the main branch. But what happens in this version is that we don't create a release branch until we are uh, absolutely ready to cut a release. So you want to branch off into a release branch as late as possible so that uh, after you cut a release, you can minimize the number of bug fixes and hot fixes that you would apply after uh, cutting the release. So after you've developed all of the features uh, that you want to be included in the next release of your uh, application, and those features have been merged into the main branch, you would then branch off of the main branch into a release branch. You would also tag the release branch with uh, the version of the release. And then you wouldn't make any changes to the release branch unless you found bugs uh, in the release that needed to be fixed. And uh, the way that you would fix those bugs is using an upstream, what's called an upstream first policy. So this is in contrast to a workflow like the Git flow, where in the Git flow, if you find a bug in a release branch, you would branch off of the release branch into a hotfix branch. And um, you would uh, produce the hotfix and then merge that hotfix branch back into the release branch. But with an upstream first policy, what we would do is follow the same workflow that we would with a feature branch if possible. Uh, we would branch off of the main branch into a bug fix branch. We would uh, merge the bug fix branch into the main branch. And then we would cherry pick the bug fix commit from the main branch onto the target release branch. The reason for cherry picking the bug fix rather than merging the main branch into the target release branch is in the event that we uh, have a situation like what's represented in this graphic where we have uh, commits or features in the main branch that are for the next release, in this case, version 2.0.0. So we want to avoid merging those features that are meant for version 2.0.0 into the uh, first release, 1.0.0. So uh, in order to avoid that, we would cherry pick the bug fix commit onto the target release branch, and then we would increment uh, the, um, the tag for that branch, and we would increment it by like you know a minor, uh, a minor fix. And like the environment branches, the release branches are long-lived branches, at least until uh, there is no longer support for that version of, of the software. And one thing to point out about the release branches version of the GitLab flow is that you should only use this workflow if you're releasing software to the outside world uh, or to the public, uh, like an open source project or some sort of you know downloadable software like uh, Chrome, for instance, like the Chrome browser. The environment branches version of the GitLab flow best suits internal teams uh, within an organization where they're not going to be releasing the software to the public. They're only promoting their uh, application to different um, environments uh, within their organization or 
to teams that are, you know, uh, publishing some you know, web application, for instance, that is closed source and uh, it's accessible to the public, but it's not like a software that you would download to your computer, for instance. So that's pretty much all I had for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you found it valuable. If you did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.